What I'm wondering is, would the Nets be willing to make changes at the deadline? Let's go into the other big news from the past couple days and more. Uh, Kevin Durant left last night's win over the Pelicans early uh, with what they initially called a knee sprain. Uh, turns out is a sprained MCL. So he is expected to miss four to six weeks, according to Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN. Um, they said a realistic benchmark could be a return following the All-Star break but they're going to err on the side of caution. So in all likelihood, we are not going to see Kevin Durant until uh, February 24th against Boston at the earliest. At the, the earliest. Yeah. So MVP odds just went out the way. Kaput. There. Yes. Yeah. The good news for the Nets or the silver lining of this is that they have a very road heavy schedule between now and the all-star break they only have five games at home they have 12 games on the road so that means they should have Kyrie Irving available more often than not during KD's absence but if his absence continues on through uh post all-star break it's still actually five of their first eight post all-star are, are on the road as well so they might get lucky in that regard but what, I mean, right now they are 0.5 games behind the Chicago Bulls for the best record in the East, but they've been, they're only four and six in their last 10. So they've, they've hit a bit of a rough patch, even with a healthy KD. What do you think this means for them? Big picture. Like big picture, nothing, because if he comes back during the regular season and is fully healthy and they go into the playoffs, that's the same. I mean, I if you're talking about regular season record, yeah, sure, I could see them maybe dropping down to third, maybe fourth if they have a real rough stretch where things aren't working. But who cares? Like, if they're fully healthy by the playoffs, it doesn't matter what seat they are. Not really. I, I would like partially agree with that, but at the same time, we're now going on two seasons yeah. where KD, Harden, and Irving will not have played together very often. Look, I mean, we saw what they did last year when they were fully healthy. Yeah, it's just so such an overabundance of offensive talent, and I, I, I don't disagree with you that there are certain question marks, defensive question marks in particular, like Zach Lowe has been all over this basically saying some of this is luck, like their defensive ranking right now. Mm -hmm. Some of this is pure luck at teams just missing uh, a ton of threes against them and, and missing a lot of easy shots against them. That will change at some point. But if they can just come out and gun for 130, I mean, we saw the shellacking they put on the Bulls. Granted, the Bulls were they had virtually no defenders available. They haven't had that mm -hmm. for a while now. But that third and fourth quarter, they just came out like gangbusters because they had so much offensive talent. And it's always going to be one of those you know, key things. Is, or is that offensive talent going to be applied every single game? No, like it's not, not to the same extent. But if they hit things just right, they can take on everyone and win. And it's not yeah. a problem. But I'm, I'm kind of talking myself into maybe them sliding down to fifth and Milwaukee staying at four because Ooh. of first, a first round Ooh. series. <laughs> like, that's how you get the playoffs freaking started, man. Like, if you have a first round series of Milwaukee and Brooklyn, like, God. let's go playoffs. That is, that is must see TV from game one. That would really suck for one of those teams. Yeah, of course, but I don't care from the entertainment perspective. It'd be yeah. glorious. But you don't care because the Bulls would get to dodge one of those two as well. Oh, look, everyone would. The, yeah, the Heat I know. would too. I mean, and 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 the Philly, I guess, if they're still as good as they are right now, are well, good. But Joel Embiid is good. That, yeah, that's yeah. what I can say about the Sixers right now. Yeah, but the Sixers have gotten fat about, against a bunch of mediocre to bad opponents lately or like depleted you know yeah uh, the teams they beat were the good teams they beat were missing key personnel so i wouldn't read too much into this hot stretch by the time this episode is live i will hopefully have an article on forbes about that but yeah i mean like 
I think Miami and Milwaukee likely jump the Nets at this point. I think they'll probably end up fourth in the East, which is bad news for your Bulls if they do finish with the best regular season record. I wonder if we do see some late season chicanery to like try to avoid the Nets or the Bucks, but at a certain point, you're not going to be able to. Oh, I don't um, think the Bulls are going to end up first. They look they have missed so many players to injuries or and COVID this year i mean you know derrick jones jr is out for i think it's four to six weeks as well like their defense has dropped like a rock because mm-hmm. all those guys have been out and i think when they get back it's also going to be an acclimation pr- uh, process so i i don't think they'll finish one could the heat finish one yeah, I, I think so. And look, Milwaukee could as well. It's yeah, just yeah. it's just about getting like their footing as well and, and getting on a hot streak. And they're due. Like let's yeah, let's be honest here. They're due to run off at like a fifteen game winning streak at some point. Yeah. They're gonna uh, do it and then boom, they're right up there. I only brought up Miami because I think Bam Adebayo is coming back within the next yes. few days. So you're you're finally getting and like they had no business losing to the Sixers last night. That was a absolute total fluke of a collapse for them but like they're they're good right. jimmy had a horrible game like he he'll be fine Duncan yeah, Robinson like a rule of point. thumb if pj tucker has more points than jimmy butler you know things are just not <laughs> going your way. goofy yeah 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 uh Duncan robinson will remember to shoot at some point remember how to shoot at some point so it's so. it's gonna be it'll be interesting to see how how the Nets fare in KD's absence and whether they can, like where they fall in the standings. But I mean, I, I'm with you in thinking like overall, not going to affect them all that much. Like mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be fine as long as KD is fully healthy by the playoffs. But I do think the more you have to develop chemistry between those three guys on the fly, you know, they're fine. They're all super talented players and they'll, especially if they draw like, Washington or the Knicks or the, even the Celtics in the first round, like they'll be fine. But once you get deeper into the playoffs, once you face the Heat or the Bucks, yeah. or the, even the Bulls, if they are fully healthy and have their defenders back, you know, I, I think some of those defensive lapses could really come back to bite them. So, I, I the it's just. It's, it's harder and harder to put faith. Like right now, I'm, now I'm looking at FanDuel. They are still the title favorites at plus 260. Golden State's plus 460. Milwaukee's plus 700. Phoenix is plus 800. I, I just, it's really getting increasingly difficult to see why they are such a favorite over the field. Yeah, no, I mean, they have issues. I, and, and look, I buy the whole offensive perspective from him, but you're right there's definitely certain things lacking there i mean james harden is not the same player he used to be and i say that fully realizing that he's averaging 23 10 and 8 right um which is absurd but but it, that's not the same caliber of player uh kyrie I, I don't know how if you're a part-time player if your body may be also be going through certain things of not playing as regularly as you're used to Mm-hmm. Maybe there's some shenanigans happening there just in terms of rhythm. I don't know. That's just me speculating. I have no clue. Or maybe it just doesn't matter. And with one guy out, both of them are just ready to step up. And then like Patty Mills takes on more of a role. At some point, Joe, Joe Harris is going to return. When is Joe Harris going to return? He was, I want to say six to eight weeks when he got hurt. That was early December, late November, I think. Yeah, so... Yeah, November 29th. Okay. Oh, maybe they just said out indefinitely. I, for some reason, I wanted to say six to eight weeks, but... Yeah, I mean, hopefully oh. he'll... I would assume he's back and fully healthy by the playoffs, at least. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's kind of my point. They're, they're going yeah. to get bodies back. You know, they're going to get healthy again so everyone can really move up a little bit. I'm not too concerned about them just in terms of their overall skill level and availability. Mm-hmm. I do think that if they meet the Bucks, they're going to be in for a world of hurt because I still think the Bucks have an issue with how the Nets were just looked as these 
like the the obvious favorites last year. And I yeah. understand that the Nets came close. They were like one KD tippy toe away <laughs> from, <laughs> right. from from taking it all. And but I still think the Bucks have a have an axe to grind against this yeah. team. And and yeah. Giannis is better. <laughs> it is yeah. so on so so ridiculous to say and i realize his stat line doesn't reflect that but he is he just plays a lot smarter right now and so so they have they have to beat everyone to get through the field but like that those are the same terms for everyone else like milwaukee yeah. has to do the same thing chicago has to do the same thing and yeah what i'm wondering is would the nets be willing to make changes at the deadline i don't know what what they have to offer because they gave up everything under the sun for james Harden. so we just talked about him but joe harris yeah i mean i think that's that would be the obvious salary matching chip and that but like are you confident enough in cam thomas who is shooting 24.4 like i know he's a scorer but shooting 24.4 percent from deep you know, do, you, do you have I mean, some? Castor Edwards has looked pretty good as well. Only 11 game sample size, which is not a whole lot, I grant you. But I mean, I'm just saying, if you can get a, a downgrade from Joe Harris offensively, but someone who's a little bit better defensively, and actually, Joe isn't a bad defender by any stretch, but someone mm-hmm. who's just a little bit more switchable, I think, defensively. Is that not something you might do? They should consider any changes that don't involve Kevin Durant, honestly. And I think that includes Harden and Kyrie, even if it, there's, you know, obviously a much bigger move if they're including one of those two guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you just, you just want to send Ben Simmons their way, don't you? <laughs> uh, this summer. This summer yeah, I do, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just which team that would be interested in Joe Harris has something of that like he's already 30 years old he's on a big contract like he's yeah. the definition of a win now player so yeah. it would have to be another team that has a glut at a position that needs to break something up that would have to send something back to the nets like you know you're, you're not right. sending joe harris to the sacramento kings or harrison barnes because what why do the kings <laughs> want joe harris well, I mean, it's the Kings worth a call, right? Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But like, you <laughs> no, know, but you're, Jeremy you're right. Grant for Detroit or something like yeah. that. No, but you're right. That's that's that is the issue, and we've actually raised that before. Like trading prime players for prime players, it's yeah, just a weird scenario, and it doesn't really happen a whole lot. Like trade partners are more aligned when it's two teams not on the same wavelength or same path. Right. that are training with each other it's a, it's a fair point it's a fair point maybe they just go to war with what they have and maybe it's enough maybe it's not i mean i think it'll be interesting to see i i i, I wonder what the long-term picture here is because there's also no assurances that hardness can stick around right or i mean or Kyrie. you, or you have Kyrie. to assume because yeah. of the kd aspect i mean for both of those guys you have to assume because of the kd aspect but yeah. no guarantee the, the team that just came to mind for me, and it's going to come to mind for every single... So, like, you, you want to target... If you are willing to trade a Joe Harris, you want to target teams on the rise. So, right. Memphis. Because they that Kyle Anderson contract, they have to do something with that. They just have to. And <clears throat> it's not enough for Joe Harris alone. But Right, but are we sure that Memphis aren't going for it? That's what I'm saying. Like, you could trade... Kyle Anderson and something for Joe Harris. Yeah, yeah, but it would still be, yeah. Yeah, but you're, you, still, you, you're still sending a very valuable piece to another contender. But then again, do Mem- like Memphis, do they have finals aspirations? I, Maybe? Dark Horse final, I like, we'll, we'll get to it a little later when we talk about Utah, but yeah. Like, I, I, they might have this. I mean, right now the they Anthony have the Melton, seed. man. Dowdy. That's that's interesting. He's a defender. Yeah. Strong on bold. Like you could make an argument that he's young enough that you could ship him out. He's still going to play minutes, but maybe you want a little bit more roster symmetry or whatever. 
like Anthony Melton would get minutes immediately in Brooklyn. Just off his defense. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they I like I don't think they'd want to give up Melton and Anderson for no, no. Joe no, Harris, so they would be swinging higher. But Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Mem- Memphis is another team that not in the Atlanta vein where it's like they are spiraling and they need to do something to pull them out of said death spiral. Atlanta or Memphis is like they're really good quicker than anyone reasonably expected. So now kind of like the Bulls. Like do you yeah. do you make that all in push now? When you have like Kyle Anderson, Tyus Jones, Jarrett Culver are all on expiring contracts, or do you continue building organically, which has worked very well for them for the past couple of seasons? Well, I mean, they don't have a single player over the age of 30. So it's yeah. a little bit different from the Bulls. There's yeah, a little bit more yeah, pressure sure. on the Bulls because you're like DeMar is 32, Vuce is 31. Like, who is their young or sorry, oldest guy here? Is that. Kyle Anderson at 28. Steven Adams? I was going to say Anderson. Steven Adams, yeah. Yeah. Steven Adams and Kyle Anderson. It's <laughs> absurd. Both were born in 1993, so now I feel really, oh, really God. old. 